Hello dear friends, may God bless every one of you. May he bless you all indeed, every one of you right now, as you are participating in this live broadcast, or later on you watch the video any time of the day. May this word meet every one of your needs, not your wants and desires and lusts, but your needs. God provides to our needs. Obviously, when a person wants to satisfy their flesh, meaning their lusts, their desires, their personal dreams and so on, then it is not the objective of this message, of this word, because the word of God comes to meet our needs our needs, not our lusts. So you must know that your needs, God has pleasure to attend to them, but not your will, because it is God's will that all of our needs may be met. So I want, I pray, I supplicate with all of my strength, with all of my faith, that He may bless you all by making you understand His powerful word. Because when we have the needs of our soul met in all of its needs, then the body will be grateful, will praise, will serve as a temple of the Holy Spirit here on earth. So, may this happen in your life. Did you understand? Did you understand? Anyway, let's learn about God's blessings. Let's receive now the manna from heaven. Such a wonderful thing. What a great thing. It's extraordinary. Pay attention to what the holy text says. Then John the Baptist said to the multitudes that came out, to be baptized by him. John the Baptist would say this to the multitude, obviously that he was referring to the Pharisees, to the religious men, the Pharisees, hypocrites. He would say, brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? to flee. And then he gives an order. He doesn't suggest. It's an order. Therefore, bear fruits, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Well, what does this text mean? What is the message it's trying to pass? John the Baptist came to prepare the way of the Lord, and I hope I am preparing the way 
for the Lord to those whose heart are humble to receive his word. And obviously, right after receive his spirit. John the Baptist was baptizing there in the wilderness by the Jordan River, those who would come to him. But what happened? The Jews, the religious men, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, all that religious group, they were religious, and they would come to him to be baptized as well. However, those religious people wanted to be baptized just to fulfill a ritual, to, let's say, purify themselves. But John the Baptist, who knew, who had discernment about the intention, would say, bear fruits, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. They'd say, well, Abraham is our father. No, Abraham was indeed the reason why the Jews came into existence. He was a descendant, and he is up until today. Every Jew, whether they are religious or not, they have Abraham as their descendant. It's a fact. But it does not mean that every religious Jew has the faith which Abraham had in his God. And this Jesus shows clearly that in Luke chapter 16, he speaks about the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man who was a Jew, but when he died, he went to hell, straight to hell. Lazarus, on the other hand, who was also a Jew, he was also a Jew, poor, miserable, a beggar, but he had within himself, he carried within himself the hope, the faith that one day he would be free by the God of his father Abraham. Poor him, he had nothing. He was in his final days on earth, in a miserable life here. But he carried a treasure within himself, which is a faith in his father Abraham. But the rich man, on the other hand, Jesus didn't even mention his name, not to give him any honor. The rich Jewish man went to hell. Why? Because the rich man, despite of having his descendants coming from Abraham, he did not believe in the God of Abraham. He did not believe him. It's what happens today with the religious people. Oh, I'm from church A, B, C. I belong to the universal church. I'm an assistant. I'm a pastor, a pastor's wife. I'm a bishop. I'm this, I'm that. It doesn't matter. It does not matter what you are or what you do for God. What matters, of course, is what is inside of you. If you are of God, then the name of the Lord Jesus is sanctified in your life. How? By the fruit, the fruits of your life. And the fruits are not works. Fruits are the result of the new character. Fruits are the result, the result of a person who truly repented. When a person is truly repentant from their sins, so if they stole, they stop stealing. If they lied, they stop lying. If they committed adultery, they stop doing it. If they used to fornicate, they stop fornicating. I mean, they start to live a life contrary to the one they used to live before, before they repented. 
they were living sin, so now they live a righteous, correct, right, worthy life before God. And see that John said to them, therefore, bear fruits worthy, fruits worthy of repentance, worthy of repentance. These fruits worthy of repentance, I repeat, it concerns the character, the honorable ways, the truthfulness, a person who is true, who is sincere, honest, they are who they are. Sometimes the person can even be miserable, a sinner, unhappy, but they are someone sincere, true. So this person, for sure, one day, sooner or later, will be before God and convert, or rather, they shall become, or be a repentant person, because they are sincere. And these are the ones whom God chooses, right? The sincere ones, the humble ones. However, unfortunately, inside of the physical church, there are many, many like the Jews of those days whom Jesus censored, Jesus criticized. Actually, he condemned them because of their insincerity and hypocrisy. They'd say one thing, but practice another. And this happens a lot, a whole lot. The person says one thing, but practices another. I was even thinking here how the supporters of certain football teams, usually those who are part of a fan club, they give their life for their team. They are sincere. They love their team in a sick way. It's something indeed ill. They put their entire life all of their strength into supporting their team. They sell everything they have to travel to another country to watch that team play. And sometimes they live with a terrible headache, double headache, because they lost all of their money and the team as well lost the game. They lost the championship and everything. So that's how it is inside of the church. There are many people inside of the churches the physical church, the institutional church, you understand me, right? Who are like this? They are passionate about their church, about their denomination, their pastor, their bishop, whatsoever. However, they do not bear fruit worthy of repentance. Why? Because they never repented. They never repented, but they have the title of a Christian. Oh, I'm this, I'm that, etc., etc., etc. So when you see an assistant, a former assistant, a former pastor, a former bishop, a former pastor's wife, whatever, a bishop, whatever, when you see them with a bad behavior, with a filthy fruit contaminated, full of worms, they, they never repented. They are not repentant from their sins. They continue insisting in their desire to ostentate the name of the church or the pastor or whatever. They continue in that but they are lost, completely lost, disoriented, because they never truly repented. And their baptism, because sometimes they got baptized several times, so nothing happened in their baptisms. And the Holy Spirit never came upon them. But they are inside of the church. They are involved there in the work. They have one-to-ones -one with people. They know how to preach, to give that Christian speech. 
but their heart is still that way, corrupt. They bear rotten fruits. And then, when the tribulations come, when they are, they suffer the consequences rather of their sins, then they come to the pastor, they come to complain, to lament, to seek justice. But how can someone who lives in injustice fight for justice? How is it possible? How can someone who lives a life of disorder, unfair, and I say of disorder and unfair, not just concerning the fact that they don't steal, that they don't commit adultery, they don't lie. No. It says here about the fruits worthy of repentance. When a person bears fruits worthy of repentance, this person is full of the Holy Spirit because God does not want to lose them. So he fills that life with his presence, and they become the living temple of God here on earth, as it is written. We are the living temple of God here on earth. Therefore, if we are the living temple of God here on earth, then our fruits are worthy of repentance. Our life is inclined towards doing what's good to our neighbor and not to be seeking the justice that they believe they need for themselves, but not for God, neither for others. They just want to receive. They want to receive the benefits of justice, but they don't care about practicing justice. So many people, unfortunately, disgracefully, say that they have repented. Apparently, it seems as though they've repented, but their fruits at home, they are a bad wife or a bad husband, a bad son, a bad daughter, a rebellious child. At home, at work, at school, on the streets, their fruits are rotten. But in the church, dressed as an assistant or even as a pastor or whatever the title they hold, that they ostentate, it's all a bunch of hypocrisy. And they think that God is not watching them. Then when the problems come, when they are removed, when they break the rules or the discipline that there is in the church, because the church of the Lord Jesus is a church of discipline and order. When they break these rules that shows the rotten fruit of repentance, not fruits worthy, but filthy, rotten. So obviously they are separated, excluded. They are removed. How can we mix something good with something bad? If you place a rotten orange amongst thousands of good oranges, by default, that rotten orange will contaminate all the good ones. Yes or no? So it has to be removed. You must remove the rotten orange and throw away. It cannot be left there with the others. It has to be removed. So in the church of the Lord Jesus, there is such criteria. When we don't follow this criteria, or rather, when we don't identify the rotten orange, then the Holy Spirit himself takes charge to do so. Why? Because he does not want to contaminate others. He doesn't want others to be contaminated. So the person stays on the outside, lamenting, complaining, oh, I was wronged, and this happened, and that. No, it wasn't an injustice. They were punished. There was justice there, actually. They were removed because they were not conducting themselves. They were not bearing fruits worthy 
of repentance. And that's the problem, dear friends. Before you, and I'm speaking now to those who say they were wronged in the church. Before you write a comment here in, in my Instagram, lamenting, complaining, oh, I was wronged and this and that happened to me. Look at your fruit. Look at yourself in the mirror. If you are of God, if you are true, if you are sincere, you have to agree with me that the problem is not in the church, neither in others, but in yourself. And you want, at all costs, you are fighting tooth and nail for, for justice. But justice was, was done. And who did justice? God himself through the Holy Spirit. Because he zeals for his church. He zeals. He knows that we don't have the ability, the conditions, nor the power to lead a work with millions of people. We don't have such power. Only he knows and sees the heart. Only God knows the heart. And it's pointless for the person to try and deceive themselves or deceive others. They know who they are. Yesterday or before yesterday, I gave my testimony of when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I told you that I was walking, it was about midday, I was thinking about my future, my dreams. I wanted to make money, to get married, etc., etc. And it's interesting that I was not even in the church, I was on the streets there in Lapa, Brazil, with books under my arms, and I was thinking just about my future here on earth. And Interestingly enough, the Holy Spirit read my thoughts. He saw that I was inclined towards doing my will. Then he came with that strong word, what does it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? It was when I was shocked because I was not thinking of God. I was not thinking in the Holy Scriptures. I was not even converted. I was nothing. As I'm still nothing, however, one thing I know, God spoke because he could see my thoughts. He read my thoughts and he came with the right word in the right measure to awaken my faith so that I could then make a decision and indeed, as I said, I was 19 years old when that happened, and I never forgot that day, and never will ever forget. Therefore, dear friends, God knows your thoughts, your intentions, not just yours, mine, ours. He knows. I testified of how God worked. He, he spoke to me. I was not in the church. I was not thinking of him. I was not thinking of anything concerning the spiritual things. Nothing. Zero. I was only thinking of myself. And he came with that word. What does it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? And this is the word that you have to understand. You are thinking of yourself, of your own desires, and forgetting of what you have been hearing all along, which is, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? What's the point of being a pastor, an assistant, a bishop? What's the point of you having a title in the church? But then you continue bearing fruit that are rotten. Rotten. You, you go to hell if you die this way, dear friend. I, I'm sorry to speak this way, but... I get angry with the situation. People who are inside of the church, they hear the word. We are here speaking, teaching, speaking of repentance. Repentance, repentance is, is a change, is a turn of 180 degree, meaning you change your life around. You go the opposite way from the one you were going. If you were lying, you stop lying. If you were committing adultery, you stop committing adultery. If you were a thief, you stop being a thief. If you are 
that person who lived in fornication, you stop fornicating. You sacrifice your flesh, your desires, your lusts, your vain ways, your feelings. You sacrifice everything so that then you may be accepted by the Lord Jesus. That's it, dear friends. It's all for all. There is no way for us to try and make a way, oh, here and there. No, it's either yes or no. Either you are or you are not. Either I am or I am not of God. There is no more or less. That's the reality. So when the problems come, the tribulations, the struggles come, people blame others. It's very good to do that, right? The world likes this. The world does not want to take responsibility for their mistakes. It happened there in the Garden of Eden as well. It happened there. After Eve fell, then God spoke to her and she said, Oh, but the serpent deceived me. The serpent deceived me. She blamed the serpent. But the serpent didn't take the fruit, the forbidden fruit, and place it in her mouth. No. She held the fruit. She ate it. She ate of it. And after all, not to be left alone in her sin, she instigated Adam to eat as well. And then when God spoke to Adam, he said, Oh, she's the one who gave it to me. The wife you gave me made me fall. Meaning, one putting the blame on the other. And that's how human beings continue to be up until today. And the serpent, the devil, is just laughing to see how human beings are silly. And they don't think. They don't reason. They don't meditate. John the Baptist, before all those people got baptized, he said, brood of vipers, brood of vipers. Jesus also called the Jews Pharisees, the hypocrites. He called them brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? There's no way to flee when the person lives in hypocrisy, the spiritual hypocrisy in the hypocrisy of, let's say, the evangelical or Christian hypocrisy, they will reap the fruits whether they like it or not. Whether they think that it was an injustice from the church or anybody else or not, they will reap the fruit. Why? Because God is fair. And there's more. There's more. God speaks clearly. There is no peace for the wicked. The last verse of Isaiah chapter 48, God says, there is no peace for the wicked. They can have money, they can be successful, they can be famous, they may have the world at their feet and gain the whole world, but they will have no peace. They won't have peace. So that's what happens. You can even, even measure your spiritual life or evaluate your spiritual life by peace. If you are that person, pay attention please. If you are that person that is at peace with yourself, with your own conscience and with God, then you know that God is with you. But if there is no peace, it's pointless for you to go to church, be a tither, an offering giver. It's pointless for you to make your donations and be charitable and good and religious. None of these matters. If you feel, if your conscience rather accuses you of anything, it doesn't leave you alone. It's always throbbing day and night without ceasing. 
it's because you are at fault with God. You are at fault. You have no peace because God didn't allow you to have peace. And why? Because you are carrying sin within yourself. And if there is no if there is no repentance, sincere repentance, then sin remains. Did you know, dear friends, you can forget your sins, but your sins will not forget you. That's the reality for you and for me. I may forget about my sins, but my sins will not forget about me. Of course, if I have been washed indeed, purified by the blood of Jesus, and my conscience is light, clean, it's light, clear, praise God, then I'm at peace with myself. I'm okay with God. But if there is anything that bothers you, then there's something wrong. Consider your conscience. If you are sincere, you are going to see, you notice that your conscience is your judge. Everyone has a conscience. Everyone has a personal judge. And this judge judges. If the conscience is accusing, it's because the person is at fault. It's because the fruits of repentance or the fruits of repentance are not actually worthy. The person thinks that by doing the work of God, or the works, the physical works, healing, delivering, blessing people, they think that this will eliminate their sins. But it will not. Sins are only eliminated when there is repentance, sincere repentance. Then, yes, when there is sincere repentance, the person is transparent. They are who they are. They are frank, they are sincere, they are truthful, they want what is right, what is fair. They are a new person. They are a new creation because indeed the, their baptism counted, it had a meaning, it was valid. But if it wasn't valid, it's because there was no repentance. And the Jews would say, oh no, but we are Abraham's children. Meaning, I am religious. I'm a descendant of Abraham. Jesus said, I know, I know that you are a descendant of Abraham. But you don't want to hear my word. That's why my word does not answer you. And that's the truth. Many people, unfortunately, unfortunately, Disgracefully, many, not few, but many, the majority, pretend, they pretend to be someone they are not. It's like a politician, you know how politicians are. They promise this and that and the other, but they know that what they are promising, they won't be able to fulfill. They don't have conditions to fulfill, but they promise anyway to gain people's trust. But there is no such thing with God, dear friends. He knows our conscience, our mind, our thoughts. He knows of our intentions. This is very strong. When God spoke to me, he, he showed that he knew well about my thoughts. When he said, what does it profit you? You think of your future, of your achievements, your material conquests, and then you lose your soul. What's the point? You gain the whole world and lose your soul. Dear friends, that's the word. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Fruits worthy of repentance. Because the unworthy fruits make you suffer and groan. You can even imagine, I even think, if people who are chosen by God go through tribulations and challenges, they go through this 
fire, the baptism with fire. They go through the desert. Imagine those who are not of God. What the devil does to them. Because God allows us to go through the deserts, the baptism or the baptisms with fire. However, those who bear fruit worthy of repentance, these ones will remain. They remain. And they overcome even death. They overcome everything, the world, themselves, death, sin, they overcome everything. But those who do not bear fruit worthy of repentance, it's not just fruits of repentance, but fruits worthy, not unworthy, but fruits worthy of repentance, those who don't bear such fruits are bound to hell. John the Baptist said, brood of vipers, and Jesus also said that in his speech, Matthew chapter 24, you're going to see, read there, chapter 24, how many times Jesus said, brood of vipers, who warned you, who enticed you to flee from the wrath to come? There's no way to flee. There's no way to flee. Either the person converts, either the person repents indeed, or they are lost. This is the reality. I know that my speech is very, let's say, harsh, difficult, but I don't care at all if if the crowd likes it or not, because I'm not here trying to make a name or trying to show off. No, no. I'm here to speak of the Word of God. Those who have ears to hear, will you hear and practice these words? Those who don't, what can I do? What can I do? But one thing I know, we shall continue speaking, preaching, teaching, we will continue speaking of what is written because I'm not the one who invented this. God is the one who said it through John the Baptist. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourself, Oh, I'm a member of church A, B, C, D. I'm a pastor. I'm this. I'm that. Or I have Abraham as my father. I'm a descendant of Abraham. I'm a Jew and this and that. The Jewish people right now, you are seeing what's happening. Israel in this very moment is suffering the consequences of its sins. God shall keep them because of Abraham. But it's not because they are worthy of this. No. But it's because God made a vow with Abraham. So God keeps that nation as the apple of his eyes. But the people who walk around lost, these ones suffer the consequences of their sins. Well, this is another, another topic, another story. I don't want to talk about this right now. But one thing is certain. Then John the Baptist said, Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, Oh, we have Abraham as our father. We have Abraham. I belong to church A, B. I am a pastor. I am a bishop. I am a pastor's wife. I am a son of a bishop. Oh, it doesn't matter who you are or you are not. If you don't bear fruits worthy of repentance, you are lost. And then he complements by saying, and even now, he concludes the message saying, and even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit, good fruit, fruit, fruits, these are fruits. It's not that they do the work, no, but the one that bears good fruit, 
and every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And this is what is in store for those who do not bear fruit worthy of repentance. You, pastor, who are watching me right now, pastor's wives, look at your life. Don't you hide behind the cape of a pastor or of pastor's wife or bishop? You who are a bishop, and by any chance you don't bear these fruits worthy of repentance, you will dance one day. You are going to be removed. And don't you come with that conversation, oh, I was wrong, then please come on. There is no... There is no... Oh, it's difficult. There is no such thing. Either you are or you are not. And even now, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear f good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. But the tree that bears good fruit, he will cleanse, he will prune, isn't it? So it can bear more fruits. Praise God. Jesus is good. He is perfectly righteous and fair. Hallelujah. Praise God. And may... The penny drop for you, dear friend, who are seeking for your own justice. You are wronged, and then you don't pay attention to your own sins because you want the benefits of justice for yourself. You want justice, you want justice. And your sins, you don't forsake them. You don't, they don't leave you alone either. And that's why you reap the kind of life that you have, unfortunately. But what can be done? May God bless you all with the understanding of this word. May God bless you all. The axe is laid to the root of the trees, and the ones that produce good fruit will be kept, but the one that does not produce good fruit will be thrown into the fire. It's written here, clearly, transparent, and you understand perfectly well, don't you? May God bless then those who want to be blessed those who want to truly want the truth and to be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God.